Hello everyone, you can call me Freebie Wits, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Analyze and Adapt Season 2, where I see if a TV series would work in three different mediums. Tabletop, as in board and card games, tabletop roleplay like Dungeons and Dragons, and finally, as a LARP. Today we're taking a look at one of my favorite childhood cartoons, Jackie Chan Adventures, a genuine 90s blast from the past. He won't just kick the bad guy's butt, he'll also kick the part of my brain that makes me feel nostalgic, and let me just say... He's still kicking. For those of you who don't know, Jackie Chan Adventures is a cartoon from a simpler time. When HD wasn't the standard, when screens still followed a 4x3 ratio and streaming services were called cable channels. The show follows the fictional adventures of the very real Jackie Chan as he travels the fictional world looking for magical artifacts while keeping them away from the evil dark hand. To keep things simple, I'll be sticking mostly to the earlier episodes where they only had to contend with 12 Zodiac talismans. Anything more than that, and it'll get a bit too crazy, I think. Either that, or I'm just being lazy. You decide. Our adventure begins with Jackie as an archaeologist guiding a bunch of other people into a booby-trapped temple to find some lost historical treasure. Now, being as awesome as he is, Jackie spots all the traps and is able to avoid them all. Unfortunately for him, one of the idiots in his party sets one off, leaving him trapped inside. Now, being the consummate badass that he is, he manages to escape, but not before grabbing a golden shield from the pile of treasure, which he used to protect himself in the first place. From there, it's revealed that a criminal organization is after said shield. Luckily for him, Augustus Black, his friend he hasn't seen for over six years, is part of a top-secret government law enforcement agency that is there to help. Oddly enough, the government agency, Section 13, is less immediate help than his niece Jade and his uncle Chan, who is, quite frankly, the best character around. One more thing, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. These little things do help the channel. With that out of the way, let's move on to board games. ay You've probably heard this spiel before if you watch my other videos. A group of heroes have to collect a bunch of power-ups that are scattered around the globe with bad guys around every corner. In my mind, it'd be easy to take what I've said and made in the Avatar episode and just put it here, replacing every instance of Avatar with Jackie Chan. But let's try to do something slightly new. From what I can tell, Jackie Chan Adventure puts a lot of focus and emphasis on the fights themselves, which isn't a surprise since we're talking about Jackie Chan here. To start with, much of what Jackie Chan does as an animation mirrors of what he does in the live-action films as well. There's a lot of environmental usage, improvised weaponry, and the usage of enemies against each other, forcing them to trip each other up and the like. It's fast, yet clear in what's happening on screen, and my suggestion is to make it a beat-em-up style game using a deck of cards. Now, you're probably wondering, am I just going to make another Slay the Spire type game? And the answer is no. To me, this Jackie Chan adventure game would be more like a puzzle game. All the bad guys have preset logic, and Jackie can perform different actions to take advantage of these behaviors. To further separate itself from Slay the Spy, each card wouldn't just do damage. Some of them might let you grab something nearby, push something or someone, or even swap places with an enemy or ally. He can knock over a table to block ranged attacks. He can push an enemy into someone else's punch. He can even pick up a fish and smack someone with it. There's precedent in the show, trust me. Point is, every level is pre-constructed and determined by a small card, much like the board game Rush Hour, of which I have fond memories of. Besides the environment and bad guys, you can also have allies who you'd need to stay in one piece to win the game. Jasmine the Kid, for example, could interrupt enemies or cause environmental damage, but if she gets hurt herself, then you lose. You can't control her directly, but you can guide her attacks away and protect her that way. Now, besides beating up all the bad guys, you can also introduce a hard mode where you can't break anything. Sure, using a vase to take out a bad guy might be easy, but we all know that Jackie Chan's signature move is to save stuff that's falling apart around him. I know it's a joke to say Jackie Chan gets more powerful if there's a vase or a ladder or babies around, but uh, at this stage, I wouldn't be surprised if he does. In this supposed hard mode, if a bad guy accidentally breaks a vase, you lose. If Jackie Chan breaks a vase, you lose. If Jasmine breaks it, then you better believe that's a lose. Point is, Jackie isn't just fighting a bunch of goons, he's also fighting his own niece and the environment around him, making for a puzzle-like game that works on so many different levels. In that regard, the game I'm thinking of has more in common with Into the Breach than Slay the Spire. Perhaps I don't even need cards, and should just give the player a preset list of moves that they can use. After all, a puzzle game isn't really a puzzle if you insert too many random elements into it like a card draw. It'd be like pushing a slot machine into a escape room that only opens the next door by random chance. 
One more thing. With that out of the way, let's move on to the next medium. Besides the obvious fighting in combat, let's try to break down what each episode can entail. The first is the actual locating of the talismans. Jackie, being an archaeologist, of course, would be suited for treasure hunting, so he spends a bit of time in trapped temples and sometimes doing puzzle-solving stuff to get at them. In most fantasy-type games, this isn't a new thing. Adventurers all around the globe have fought goblins, dragons, and everything in between in their pursuit of treasure in death-trap-filled dungeons, but it's not common to have an enemy try to jump you outside the dungeon. That is, jumping you right outside the dungeon as soon as you've finished said dungeon. Speaking of being jumped by the bad guys, despite the amount of fighting he does, Jackie actually spends a decent amount of time running as well. Just having the talisman isn't a victory for him. He actually has to keep it out of nefarious hands as well. Now, like many of these analyze and adapt videos, we could always just slap the setting down into an existing rule set and call it a day. But like always, I'm going to talk about the various aspects of Jackie Chan that would make it unique, how it can be adapted into a game, and why you would or wouldn't use those aspects. The first are the magic items. Once again, this is something that isn't new to tabletop role players. Everyone has used a magic item before. What Jackie Chan does that's a bit different is how often these items change hands. When retrieving the magic talismans, it's made clear that Jackie doesn't intend to keep them and instead hand them over to section 13. Besides that, the talismans sometimes change hands during combat itself. In Dungeons & Dragons, if a player is given a flaming longsword, they'll often keep it until they get a better weapon. Very rarely do they get disarmed and have that sword stolen mid-combat. Mechanically speaking, a Jackie Chan style game would have to have some form of disarming or one that's streamlined. Having them drop the item or snatch it out of their hands would be the way to go. Even playing hot potato with a useful item with your party could be another strategy. Imagine blasting things with heat vision and passing it over to your ally and have them blast the enemy from the next round from a different angle. I also mentioned running away earlier. Keep in mind, the goal of the game isn't to beat everyone up, but instead to keep the magic items safe. Trapping the enemy on a boat bound for a faraway land is a victory. Getting on a plane yourself and flying away is a victory. Remember kids, victory doesn't have to end with dead enemies or even unconscious ones, even if tabletop RPGs tend to go that way. Now, I'm not saying we should make the enemies invincible, but rather make non-lethal combat viable. Why spend all that time reducing someone's HP down to zero when it's much easier to push them into a room and lock the door? Sure, they might get out eventually, but by the time they're free, the good guys have gotten away. One more thing, it's time to get to LARP. As always, punch and kick, bad and LARP. We got that covered? Good. So Jackie Chan Adventures, luckily for us, has weapons as a precedent. From swords, staves, and windshield wipers, there's no shortage of smashing when it comes to firm-based weaponry. Okay, maybe not the windshield wipers, but you get the idea. Hell, the first episode even has a shield that's thrown, Captain America style, but we won't be doing that in LARP. Mostly because thrown weapons have to be built to a certain safety standard to be thrown in most LARPs, and shields not only don't meet that standard, but they actually might get damaged when thrown. So instead of treading old ground, I'm going to use Jackie Chan Adventures to talk about an aspect of LARP that I haven't really brought up before. Specifically, the aspect of new players and how to handle them. From what I can tell, there are several ways to introduce new people to the hobby. The first and easiest way of doing things is to throw them into the deep end. This has its advantages and disadvantages, the advantages of which being people learn quicker when they're under pressure. This style of handling I believe works best in LARPs where veteran players don't have an inherent mechanical advantage over newer ones. After all, a new player can't learn if they're dead in the first two seconds of combat from a level 100 fire blast spell. LARPs where this would work well would be murder mysteries. The next way of handling newbie players involves buffing them so that they can last longer in combat and at the very least get a feel for the flow of the game. This can be tricky in universe to explain, however. Why can the unarmored mage stand up to a fully armored knight? In that regard, you can probably chalk it up to magic itself and how fickle it is. But then you'd have to explain why it's temporary or why people don't keep using that power all the time. It's not that big of an issue, and from what I can tell, most LARPs just hand wave the issue anyways. Point is, as long as everyone is having fun, it doesn't matter. Another way of handling newbies is by having them be NPCs as the faceless horde of ninjas, just like in Jackie Chan Adventures. The downside is that not everyone is a newbie forever, so your source of ninja hordes will have to come from another source eventually. However, I think there's another kind of newbie we can use that's been right in front of our faces the entire time. 
the kid. In Jackie Chan Adventures, that kid is Jade. She might occasionally fight, but it's explicitly shown that all the good guys will try to protect her. It's an intrinsic part of their good guy motivations. She might not be experienced in the world of direct ass kicking, but she does contribute in her own way. Slowly learning to fight as the series goes on, new players can fill a similar role, especially in an NPC monster heavy game. Have a new player be squires to the knights, apprentices to the seasoned wizards, introduce an actual buddy system and give bonuses to the team for doing it. Maybe the player gets some sort of buff if their charge stays alive throughout the game or something. Perhaps the knight would respawn quicker if their squire is alive on the field, for example. One more thing. That's the last thing. So that's my analysis of Jackie Chan Adventures and how it can be adapted into three different mediums. How do you think it'd work? Have any of you tried adapting any elements of the show yourself? And if so, how did it go? Consider leaving a comment, liking the video, and subscribing. Sharing it would also help the channel greatly. My name is Freebie Wits, and one more thing. Thank you for watching.